Major funding for NJTV News is provided in part by the members of the New Jersey Education Association, making public schools great for every child. And PSE&G, we make things work for communities. Tonight on NJTV News, a spotlight on health care. Need health care coverage? Open enrollment for Obamacare kicked off today. It's a personal and political priority for thousands in New Jersey. Survivors of the Parkland School shooting are here at William Patterson, reliving their story in order to inspire change. Preterm birth rates and maternal morbidity is on the rise in New Jersey. The people behind me are here to learn how to fix it. Plus, a partnership to help newly released prisoners make it on the outside, and people head outside to clear debris from waterways. They're called the Stream Team. Those stories are more next on NJTV News. Live from the Agnes Barris NJTV studio at 2 Gateway Center in Newark, this is NJTV News with Mary Alice Williams. Hello, thank you for joining us. Health care is not on the midterm ballot, but voters' concerns over insurance, including coverage for pre-existing conditions, is a hot topic on the campaign trail. Today is the start of open enrollment to sign up under the Affordable Care Act. Senior correspondent Brenda Flanagan met some people who are doing just that. I'm going to do my best to see what they, I could afford. On day one of open enrollment, Brenda Lopez sought help to sign up for Obamacare. She works part-time, has a pre-existing condition, and hoped a navigator at New Jersey Citizen Action could help her find affordable coverage. I don't know. I hope they give me a cheap insurance, mm -hmm. you know, just for emergency like I had. Health care is a very personal issue for Congresswoman Bonnie Watson Coleman right now. They really um, removed the cancer node with surgery back in August. Mm -hmm. So I'm just plowing through the chemo now. Watson Coleman's been getting chemo for lung cancer, the same disease that killed her mom, she explained. She spoke today during a campaign event for Democrats at Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital supporting the Affordable Care Act. 3.8 million people in New Jersey have pre-existing conditions. I'm a living example right now of the importance of having health care and the importance of having access to doctors at a very early stage in what could have been a very, very serious issue. The administration is doing everything can, it can to bring us back to a day when health insurance companies got to pick and choose who was worthy of receiving care and who uh, wasn't worth it at all. This is serious stuff. The administration's decision to abandon people with pre-existing conditions just isn't a flip-flop. It's a broken promise. A new report by congressional Democratic staffers predicted the Trump administration's legal assault against coverage for pre-existing conditions could cause as many as 352,000 people in New Jersey to lose federal protections against coverage denials or premium increases as a result of their pre-existing conditions, gender or age. Basically, it would become unaffordable for many New Jerseyans who right now have a guarantee of, of protection for, for them. Three quarters of people surveyed in a September poll by the Kaiser Family Foundation said it's vital that coverage for people with pre-existing conditions should remain law. Some GOP candidates are saying they'll support coverage despite supporting Trump. We should not make any changes to Medicare or Medicaid to protect the most vulnerable people in our society to ensure their benefits are preserved. And we absolutely must protect patients with pre-existing conditions. The Murphy administration launched a website called getcovered.nj.gov and provided $375,000 for five community organizations to help people navigate ACA enrollment. This after the Trump administration chopped federal funding for navigators by 79 percent and cut advertising by 90 percent. Brenda Lopez succeeded. She texted us. She'd found a plan she can afford. The ACA open enrollment period runs through December 15th, but Democrats on the campaign trail say there's another important deadline, November 6th, Election Day. In Newark, I'm Brenda Flanagan, NJTV News. In the wake of the synagogue slaughter, Governor Murphy on Monday proposed enacting a second round of new gun laws that would, among other things, criminalize trafficking, encourage smart gun technology, and create violence intervention programs, measures supported by people with firsthand knowledge of the issue, including some students from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Leah Mishkin reports. 
because we could hear him in the hall and we could hear the screaming from the other rooms and the screaming for help. Parkland shooting survivor Taylor Morales and her fellow classmate Macy Wanacott told their stories at William Patterson University this week to continue the conversation on what they call common sense gun laws. If you're not allowed to drink at that age, then you shouldn't be allowed to buy a firearm at that age. Also, there has to be universal background checks. Semi-automatic and fully automatic weapons should not be available to civilian use. The students of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas started the March for Our Lives movement after a gunman opened fire at their school, killing 14 students and three staff members. Thousands of people across the country rallied alongside them to end gun violence. I feel guilt that I lived and they didn't. So I feel if there was a reason that I have to do everything in my power to make sure that my life is is worth living and that what I'm doing is making actual change. The director of the Newtown Foundation, Tom Campbell, has been fighting for gun control laws ever since his father was shot and killed 50 years ago. So on a grassroots level, we're working much more closely with state assemblies and state senates to push bills and you know, we're seeing better and better laws on a local level. Sooner or later, that rises to the top. All of those local legislators, they move up the ladder. A New Jersey bill banning ghost guns or guns made using untraceable components, including plastic guns made by 3D printer, was recently sent to the governor's desk. If signed, it will be the strongest law in the country on those measures. I would say we need to look past our political views and our political parties and come together. The March for Our Lives organization hopes to get a record number of young voters to the polls in the upcoming election. If they can continue to just not do anything, eventually there's not going to be an office anymore because we're going to make sure they're not there because they're here to represent the public and the citizens and that's not what they're doing. Morales told the room nine months ago she was cheering for her friend Gina. Nine months ago she saw her neighbor Joaquin every day and took that for granted. Both were killed and they and the other victims are the reason why she has not stopped fighting for change. I'm going to push to make sure that others will not have the same fate as they did. The movement is calling on students across the country to walk out of school or work at 10 o'clock on Election Day to vote. In Wayne, Leah Mishkin, NJTV News. A warning on the solvency of public worker pensions. That tops the state's business news. Here's Rhonda Schaffler. Rhonda? Mary Alice, New Jersey continues to have one of the country's worst funded public worker pension plans even after increased contributions from the state. Only Kentucky's pension fund is in worse shape. A new report from credit ratings agency Standard & Poor's finds the state's pension system can only cover about 36 percent of its total liabilities based on data from last year. S&P also says New Jersey has the highest total of funding obligations to both retirees and bondholders. Given the stock market volatility we've seen as of late, S&P also warned that investment losses for pension funds could make for a rougher road in the next recession. Thousands of New Jersey residents received pay raises today. Workers at Newark Liberty International Airport received their first pay increase as part of an agreement with the Port Authority. Those employees will see incremental pay increases between now and 2023 when they will then earn $19 an hour. And Amazon is now paying its New Jersey workers a base rate of $15 an hour. Governor Murphy praised that move and said the legislature needs to step up and take action on a $15 minimum wage. Governor Murphy has signed into law a bill that would set up an Office of Economic Development for properties owned by NJ Transit. One of the bill's authors, Assemblywoman Yvonne Lopez, says NJ Transit is the second largest landholder in the state. This new office will make recommendations for transit-oriented development opportunities. The goal is to generate revenue for the transit agency from its real estate holdings as an alternative to raising fares. New Jersey students who attended the now bankrupt Corinthian colleges are supposed to be getting their student loans discharged, but that hasn't happened yet. Last month, a federal judge ordered that the U.S. Department of Education implement an Obama-era student loan forgiveness rule 
It allows debt to be discharged if a school used deceptive practices to encourage students to borrow money. Now, State Attorney General Gerbier Graywall has joined other AGs across the country calling on the Education Department to immediately discharge those loans. The Attorney General says 2,200 students in New Jersey were affected by predatory lending practices at Corinthian colleges. On Wall Street, stocks rose in today's session, the Dow climbing about 265 points. And those are your top business stories. Support for the Business Report is provided by New Jersey Tourism Industry Association, announcing its annual New Jersey Conference on Tourism, December 5th and 6th at Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Atlantic City. Online at njtia.com. Support for the medical report is provided by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. A tenth patient has died at the Wanakee Rehabilitation Center of the adenovirus that infected at least 27 people over the last month. All but one of those who died were children on ventilators whose immune systems were already compromised. The state health commissioner, Sharif El Nahal, says he's been in contact with the U.S. Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services about standards at facilities like Wanakee Center for Nursing and Rehabilitation. A renewed focus on maternal and infant mortality and preterm births in New Jersey, given new urgency by the March of Dimes annual premature birth report card. Brianna Vernozzi reports. Across the U.S., two women die from pregnancy-related causes. It's a fact that disproportionately affects communities of color. And according to the CDC, New Jersey now ranks 45th in the country for our high maternal death rate. We're the only nation, only developed nation, uh, that actually has had a rise in maternal mortality uh, every year, pretty much on average, since 1990. At a conference in Newark, healthcare workers, policymakers, and state leaders are gathering, proposing prevention strategies and improvements to obstetric care. Comorbidities are one of the main factors that are affecting maternal child health. The, the rising trend of obesity, hypertensive disorders, comorbidities of, of diabetes, and the vicious cycle just continues. The most concerning trend, black mothers die at more than three and a half times the rate of white women. Specialists in the field say physicians need to shift their cultural mindset, rethink how they practice medicine, and focus on quality of care. Are we getting women antihypertensive medication in a timely fashion? Do we have systems in place to have carts on the, on the floor for a hemorrhage so that we're ready in emergency with all the equipment that we need right away to save a woman's life? I mean, there's some basic things. Where your patient is coming from in terms of their life experience, in terms of who they're going to go home to, and also in terms of their understanding of what their discharge instructions are. So these are preventable deaths. I've actually selected a black caucus to women in particular and Assemblywoman Shavonda Sumter, who is my first vice chair uh, of the Black Caucus, and other women to come together and to make this a priority issue for us and to get in front of it. Because you cannot talk about infant mortality without having the black community very much involved. Another growing source of infant mortality is mental health. 8% of pregnant women are diagnosed with depression, and opioid abuse now accounts for about 10% of white maternal deaths. The March of Dimes put out this report card today on premature births. New Jersey gets a C, with 9.5% of babies born preterm. That number has slowly dropped over the years, but it's far from where health experts want to be. What's worse, though, the rate among black women is 47 percent higher than all other women in the state. Take a look at the chart and you'll see no one is untouched. The reality is mothers are sicker today than they were 20 years ago. Um, and part of that's the obesity epidemic. That's a huge part of it. Part of it is that mothers have aged. The combination of obesity and the associated diseases with that, high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, and increasing age makes this population much more at risk. The rates are alarming, but experts at this symposium say we're finally on the road to giving this public health crisis the attention it deserves. In Newark, Brianna Venozzi, NJTV News. Which witch is which?
That top tonight's Garden State Express. Our first stop, Bordentown, basking in the afterglow of a big night. A little street of little homes built for immigrant Irish canal builders was decked out in witches of storybook fame. Here, Hansel and Gretel's gingerbread hag, their C.S. Lewis's The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe's White Witch, and Oz's Wicked Witch of the West in a field of not poppies, but pumpkins carved to perfection and punctuated by at least one princess. Next to Secaucus, where it was ragamuffins on parade, the annual event from the Clarendon School to Buckmuller Park provided superheroes and their BFFs, pony rides and a pumpkin patch, and a petting zoo too. Finally, Cranberry, setting sights on holidays ahead, Hess Toy Trucks unveiled its 2018 edition, a three-in-one recreational vehicle tucked inside an all-terrain vehicle and a motorbike to boot with wheelie-popping racing motors and little helmeted riders and 73 lights, the most of any Hess truck ever. Over the years, the collectibles have been fire trucks, patrol cars, spaceships, and drag racers. Last year's was a dump truck with a loader. They are the last vestige of the Hess empire. The Hess stations are now speedways, but Hess still churns out the toys with batteries included. And that's our Garden State Express for Thursday, November 1st. Something up in your neighborhood? Tip us off. It's easier to amplify your voice by registering to vote. Starting today, anyone applying for a driver's license or permit or non-driver ID will automatically be added to the voter rolls unless they opt out before they had to deliberately opt in. And a record number of Jersey citizens may be voting by mail. The states issued 553,606 vote by mail ballots nearly four times the number issued in the last midterm election. Officials pin the surge in absentee ballot applications on a new law that required anyone who voted by mail in 2016 to automatically be sent a mail-in ballot this time around. Any registered voter can still pick up an absentee ballot at the county office until 3 o'clock next Monday, November 5th. Any ballots mailed in must be postmarked no later than Election Day, November 6th. And don't forget, NJTV News will be on the campaigns and have full coverage of the November 6th midterm elections. Join us from 8 o'clock till 11.30 p.m. on air and online. People released from prison too often face insurmountable obstacles to making it on the outside. The Corrections Department is working with other agencies and nonprofits to improve the odds. Michael Hill reports. Coming home to little to no resources is extremely difficult. Uh, my family was there, but they're only at a limited capability. Kareem Mathis of Trenton says breakthroughs for his reentry came when people began to trust him. After his eight years in prison for a drug conviction, Mathis says he prepared his mind for release on his way into Tully House in Newark. It clicked the day walking in to a, their classification system, and you're gathered around 15 or 20 different males, and pretty much you're just stripped of everything. At that moment, you say, this is not the life that I want to live. Behind bars, Mathis thought of, and after release, created the app Slap, sending love and pictures. Write a note, snap a shot, and send it to inmates. How did you come up with this? Hearing stories of gentlemen that I was incarcerated with that they hadn't received a letter from a family member or received pictures because people are just too busy with life. Mathis shared his story with this conference, the New Jersey Reentry Coalition, the theme overcoming barriers to prisoner reentry. The fact of the matter is that no one agency will be able to tackle these challenges alone. The New Jersey Department of Corrections and the private nonprofit sector say their partnership has driven New Jersey to the forefront of reentry success in the nation. It's an evolving uh, body of work, but I think New Jersey is doing a very good job. 
Acting Corrections Department Commissioner Marcus Hicks says New Jersey releases 10,000 inmates a year, more and more of them after they've received drug treatment and or earned college-level educations behind bars. The philosophy is, is that we want to make sure that the individuals that come into our custody are in a better place when they leave uh, than when we, we receive them. Volunteers of America is one of the state's biggest partners with programs helping ex-offenders get a driver's license, housing, a job and other necessities. Programs to reduce mass incarceration by helping ex-offenders avoid breaking the law again or violating parole. One speaker said in the late 90s, parole violators made up 40 percent of the state prison population. History's proven if we don't manage the transition home, you're more likely to go back to prison. Volunteers of America credit lawmakers with getting it for understanding the legislative support needed for reentry programs. But if it had a wish list, what would be at the top? It's time now for legislators and policymakers to think broadly. We have built over the last 25 years an enormous infrastructure of reentry programs, both residential and non-residential. What, who else should we be serving in those programs? Mathis says he has several motivations, family, two jobs, his budding business, and more to stay on the right track. He says those leaving prison need housing and someone to give them a chance. But the number one attribute to successful reentry is a different mindset. Because without your mind, none of that is developing. If your mind doesn't change, nothing else is going to change around you. In Trent, Michael Hill, NJTV News. Support for the Environment Report provided by PSE&G, making things more sustainable for New Jersey. It's the job of state and federal government to ensure a clean water supply, but locals are picking up the work of cleaning up waterways as well. Lauren Wonko found an environmental stream team. They eagerly wade into the water and dig for trash. If everyone would do a little bit, just a little bit, it would make a big difference. The Central Jersey Stream Team doesn't need to dig for long. With shovels in hand, they pull up everything from shopping carts to bikes. If somebody goes out and they, they go in their, their kayak or they're on the edge of the river and they see a lot of trash, then they automatically think that it's not clean. And for a lot of people, it kind of triggers in their head that, yeah, this is somewhere where I can dump my stuff. If our goal is to, to clean that up, so if somebody sees an area that's clean, they're less likely to, to make it worse. It all started during a family canoe trip on the Raritan River. They wanted to unplug my nieces and nephews and the only get them outside. Let's get them outside. Let's get them in the environment. While on the water, they spotted loads of trash and decided to start cleaning it up. My nieces and nephews were counting tires in the water more than they were counting any of the wildlife and then they started taking out piece by piece and they figured that it starts with just one. Eventually news of their efforts began to spread and other volunteers joined to create the Central Jersey Stream Team in 2013. We started with the Raritan River and that's been our focus up to now. Um, the Raritan River watershed. The goal is just to obviously remove the trash that we can and then just bring awareness to the fact that there there is a lot of pollution in the water as far as dumping of trash and, and littering and also trying to get people to understand the connection between how the whole stormwater system works as far as anything that lands on the street, if it's a plastic bottle or a can, it'll eventually make its way into the waterways and then out to the ocean. The nonprofit's expanding their reach. On this day, they're cleaning up the Raleigh River. Because it's a tidal area, the water raises, rises and falls with the tides, and at low tide, there's a lot of big um, items that are uh, resting on the bed, and it's very unsightly. When people see other people getting involved in the community and taking action, it makes them feel obligated to, to get involved and really want to, you know, participate in events like this. So far, the Central Jersey Stream Team has organized 75 cleanup events. They've removed more than 4,600 tires, 35 bikes, 45 shopping carts, and even a few cars. The trash from this day's event is piled up in one area, and it will be removed by the local Public Works Department. 
It takes a team to do the job. This carpet is soaking wet and covered in mud. While volunteers pull it from the water, others spend more than 30 minutes digging out this cart. In some cases, this stuff has been there for decades, and it takes a dozen people with shovels and pry bars and hooks to, and just digging with your hands to get at this stuff and get the mud and bricks off before you can finally get this entire thing, whatever it is, a tire or shopping cart, out of the water. By the end of the afternoon, the team pulled out piles and piles of trash from the Rawway River. It's motivation to keep cleaning. In Rawway, I'm Lauren Wonko and Jake TV News. And now some noteworthy facts that help you know Jersey. Passaic County has New Jersey's highest rate of preterm births at 11.9%. New Jersey Transit is the second largest landowner in the state. The Raritan watershed spans 38 towns as the largest watershed in New Jersey. And petroleum tycoon Leon Hess started his business empire in 1933 by delivering heating fuel to homes in Asbury Park. He was 19 years old. If there's someone you'd like to get to know Jersey, share. Use hashtag no Jersey tomorrow on NJTV News from Newark, Silicon East. Surprising applications spawned by innovations. To share any story you've seen tonight, go to njtvnews.org. I'm Mary Alice Williams. For all the men and women of NJTV News, thanks for being here. See you tomorrow. WJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. NJM Insurance Group, serving the insurance needs of New Jersey residents and businesses for more than 100 years. And Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association.